and we're off. I'm Ken Seven from XRT. Thanks for coming out. We're gathered here tonight to hear the musings of a guy for over 20 years who's been writing some of the most witty, literate music around. And he hates me gushing about him. They're also here in celebration of, uh, or he is here rather, in celebration of the new record, Apple Venus Volume 1. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Andy Partridge. I have nothing prepared, and I must say I've never done anything like this before in my life, so, you know, bear with me on this. The chair's nice, I wish I could have got a rocking one, I could have got a, a storyteller thing going on. It's a dark and stormy night, kids. So, really, I mean, do we, what do we want to do? Is there like a question and answer thing? Nobody's clued me in, they just said go to borders, and here I am. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> so here I am. Um, well, okay, do we want to do some uh, question and answer thing before the ball points fly? All right, do we have another mic or, or they have to yell and I don't? They have to yell and I don't. All right, yell on. Yell on, sweet yellster. <laughs> Alex said recently that there might not be enough songs for Apple Venus Volume 2. Is this the case? Enough songs for Volume 2. No, no, no. We, we had something like 42 songs, and then we just thought, ah, oh, shit, I don't want to write any more. Um, which you do, you know, it's like, how much can you eat before you have to go to the bathroom? Seriously, it's like that. It's like that. So there are more than enough songs for Volume 4, but we're going to stop at Volume 2 and, you know, then start afresh. So. <laughs> There's one. Which of the lyrics that you've written would you most like to be remembered for? Which lyric would I most like to... <sighs> oh. See, uh, <laughs> this is going to be a tough one. Um, you see, the lyrics that have affected me may not have been the lyrics that have done anything to anyone else. That's the problem. That's the point. I mean, I may... The trouble is, I may be remembered for, oh, 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 my Statue of Liberty. <laughs> what, I'd, what I'd like to be remembered is maybe the lyrics to Rook, or the lyrics to something like Wrapped in Grey, or Easter Theatre, or something like that. So, you can't tell, can you? <laughs> It'll probably be Rest in Peace, be the eventual lyric, you know. I always wonder what I would have on my gravestone, actually. It would prob probably be something like, I told you I wasn't well. <laughs> <laughs> or, I can see up your skirt. <laughs> or just plain, get off! Get off! <laughs> okay, any more? Any more? This one. This one. How, did you, uh, how did you meet up with Martin Newell? Um, it was a simple case of Martin sending me demo after demo after demo after demo. <laughs> and me going, who is he, you know? So, um, I'm getting really nervous right now. You have to forgive me. I've never done anything like this before. Um, so I'll strip off. That'll be good. Thank you. Uh, Martin sent me loads of stuff, and I thought, he's good. And then um, he rang me up and said, would you do my album? 
And I said, yeah, all right, if you come and do it in my garden shed. So we did, and it was, it was good fun. And he was getting divorced, and I was getting divorced, and we could commiserate, you know. <laughs> and sit there and go, the bitch, the bitch. <laughs> Which you do. You know. So it was, it was easy. It was a phone call, you know. Nothing really stagey, I'm afraid. Um, who was that spy seven inch if it wasn't you guys? Did you ever find out? The spies? Yeah, the seven inch. The spies. Yeah, it's just them? I, I suppose so, yeah. Did, it's it's not us, no. It's, I know, I've heard that before. I, I've admitted to most of the things that were us. <laughs> the the key word is most. <laughs> no, we, we weren't the spies. So. That's good. So swap it, sell it. <laughs> the worst frisbee. Yeah. Anybody wants to buy a spy seven inch? I've got one. Um, what's the story about Chris Dipper? What does he have to do with the holding back? Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> um, this is kind of long and boring, so I'll make it short and boring. <laughs> Um, I went. Uh, I was writing with Chris. I was writing for an album with him. You must excuse me. I feel really nervy. You must excuse me. You know, just, just look the other way or something. <laughs> um, uh, I was writing with him for a solo album. And he said, come down and see my studio, which I did. And I thought it was lovely. It was like a big barn. You know, it was a lovely space. And he had some equipment in there. I thought, wow, this is great. And I said, you know, how much do you charge people to record in here? And he said, what, 250 pounds a day, which is fantastic. I mean, that's a fantastic rate in England because most studios are between 800 and 1,000. If you, anyone's been in an English studio, it's, the clock is like, you know, 10 pen, 20 pen, 30 pen, 40 pen. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of thing. So I thought, this is fantastic. Great space, great price, we'll come down. We came down and the mixing desk had been taken apart for repairs. And no joke, it was like all over the floor. Just pieces. And I thought, ah, oh, it's boding bad, you know. And we hung around for four days and he was kind of all Mr. Embarrassed, you know, and didn't know what to say, and I'm really sorry, you know, no, no, no. So we went back home and he called me up and said, look, this is terrible. Ah, my favorite band, you know, you should find a mixer and pieces, you know. Come down again and you can have 10 days free to make up. So we went down again, and things still weren't working great. And on the ninth day, he came in and said, I want paying. So we thought, oh dear, this is the most expensive free time ever. The price had gone up a lot more as well, from 250 pounds a day. So we said, okay, we'll, we'll leave, you know, we're going. So we paid the engineer, because um, we didn't want him to work for nothing. And we found out that as, as we were clearing our stuff away, he'd sneaked in and stolen the tapes to the album which he still has now. So we had to start again. He believes we owe him money. We believe he offered us free time to make up for the fact that nothing was working. And I don't know what he's done with the original tapes. So maybe he's made them into a nice macrame couch or something. <laughs> <laughs> or if you see him with an outfit, it looks suspiciously woven. You know. <laughs> Listen carefully. That could, be, that could be the first, you know. Hey, any more? Oh, damn, there are. Okay. <laughs> um, extremely residential. I don't know how much I should tell you. Nobody wore, nobody wore an eyeball. Um, <laughs> damn it, I wanted to. I wanted to put the eyeball on. You know. But they said, no, it's relaxed. So nobody wore the eyeball, and uh, they just shoved me in there and said, sing. And I said, sing what? And they said, sing whatever you want. And so they gave me some words, a few words on a piece of paper, and I just sang, you know, take one. I didn't know how the melody went, how the tune went, they just pointed and I sang. So, kind of a mystery, huh? <laughs> sort of mystery for me as I was doing it as well. It's, it's good fun. To part-time resident. Are you looking for another guitarist? <laughs> Are you offering? <laughs> You don't have one on you or anything, you know. <laughs> spare one, you know, just inflate him, you know. <laughs> no, I guess, um, I guess I'm gonna, I'm, I say I'm gonna have to do it. I mean, I like playing guitar. You know, I'm a bit sort of Mr. Spazzy hands, but it kind of sounds interesting, you know. <laughs> I'm not as proficient as Dave was on the proficiency scale, but it's, you know, it's a bit more clumpy, but interesting, maybe, so. Yeah, I get to do it, right. <laughs> so. What advice would you offer to me, uh, 
Uh, record deal. Become a banker. Do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> Get out of music immediately. <laughs> There's no cash in it. You know. Um, what what I offer? What would I say? Um, for record deals, I'll tell you something. We when we eventually escape from the evil clutches of Virgin, <laughs> I feel I should have a lot of floor light come up. You know. <laughs> Actually, I do a great, I do a great villain. Can I do my? <laughs> Isn't that good? Um, when we escaped the evil clutches of Virgin, we went and saw every record company going. And I just, I came to New York and got the phone book and, you know, at our record companies and just went through them all and said, "Look, I'm around the corner." I've got loads of demos. Are you interested? Can I come and see you? And I went to see them, and they put the demos on, and they sort of said, you know, you can have this little deal here, you know. This, this, this. <laughs> this, is, this is what they make out of a record. Actually, to be truthful, the store has that much. The record company has that much, and then the band has that much. And they said, well, you can, you can have, you know, this much, and... A lot of the labels were, were doing that, you know, I was going to see them, they were just doing this kind of thing with us. And um, somebody, I forget who, said, why don't you call yourself a company? Call yourself a, a record company. And we said, all right, so we <coughs> idea of records. And then, so, like, you know, a little while later, we went back to these people and said, hi, we're Idea Records and we represent XTC. And they immediately sort of went, here. <laughs> I guess the moral of the story is, the moral of the story is, it's kind of honor amongst thieves, you know, they'll rip off bands, but they're not so crazy about ripping off another company. So my advice is, if you want to form a band, call yourself a company first. <laughs> Great echo in here. <laughs> Yay, send me, who said that one? I'm getting, I'm getting sort of vibes from the ether here. Yeah, he just sent me some demos. I'd like to. Uh, I could have to get the Ouija board out to send that one. I don't know where it's going. Okay, oh, apparently we have to sign. So let's just do a couple more questions and then... And then... Um, so I don't, I'm making this up as I go along and I think they are too, so don't worry about it. So some more uh, Band in the Blue shirt. Yeah, I got... My older brother plays guitar. He can figure out anybody else's music. And you can't figure out most of your stuff. Do you, uh, do you use alternate tuning, or we've we've done some uh, we've done alternate tunings on on some albums, like all of. God, I hate. I love to admit this. On on Big Express, I discovered open E tuning, which is as old as the as the hills. You know, like, <laughs> the, the old blues tuning. What if, what if blues are waking up and having a blues in the morning? <laughs> Or, in fact, any time of day you so desire. Um, but um, I was very lazy on that record, and I, I wrote all the songs. I, I broke my E string, and I'm extremely lazy now, and I didn't replace it. Uh, so all of the numbers on that album were written on a five-string guitar in, in uh, the blues tuning. So, a couple more, Miss Lena. Uh, very well, in fact, too well. I've had an average of five hours sleep in the last seven days <laughs> on each night, you know, so it's six, 6.30 in the morning, come on, we've got to go somewhere, and, oh, yeah, yeah, and you know, just a summer, ah, no time to eat that. So. <laughs> I, I've done more interviews and more promotion, I think, for this record than, than any of the last half dozen. So. Well, good! <laughs> What's Colin doing? He was here till yesterday. And then he flew home and he's joining me again in Los Angeles? Yes. yes. Who said yes? <laughs> what do you know? Did you know about this? <laughs> okay, fell on the cord jacket. Is it cord jacket? Yeah. Yeah, it's a cord jacket. He looked around. And there were more people with cord jackets lurking behind me. Uh, other than this record, what's your uh, favorite or most uh, favorite record that y'all have done? Uh, favorite songs? I mean, not one whole album. You just... Uh, songs, album, yeah. Oh, uh, for all sorts of different reasons. Books are burning because I love books. Yes. Yeah. Um, not carnally, I just like them. <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, you know. <laughs> Although 
I suppose if you had a big one and you fold it. <laughs> when, oh, no. Uh, books and burning, I love books. Uh, Rook, because it really unhinged me, and I don't know why, I don't know where it came from, and it really scared me. Um, Oh, what else? Um, I, I'm very happy with Easter Theatre. River of Orchids excited me immensely. Um, thank you. It's almost a box of tissues type of excitement. You know. um, I'll move these record companies out of the way. Hang on. And um, what else? Seagull screaming kisser kisser. Because it was the first. Thank you. It was the first thing I ever wrote on keyboard. I had a Mellotron, which is about this sort of size and, and uh, had it in a spare bedroom. Well, it wasn't spare, it was the bedroom, really. <laughs> Terrible confession to make. You know. <laughs> Mellotron in your bedroom. <laughs> and th this is my keyboard technique here. See, this, this is the most sophisticated my keyboard technique ever got. That hand goes like that, and that one plays the tune. And as soon as that one plays the tune, that one forgets what it's doing. So, but I mean, a lot of people know the story about the cardboard hand, and it's completely true. Um, I can't compose on keyboards, and I, I made a cardboard hand once to... to um, I'll, I'll work up to I've spoiled the punchline, really, haven't I? Um, I'm looking for great chord shapes on the keyboard, and I found one one day. And I'm really very primitive and lazy, and I, I, I either write the numbers on, and letters on the, on the keys, you know. And I found this great chord, and I thought, this is so good, this is such a good chord, and I didn't know what to do, you know. So I ran into the house, holding my hand. And I found a piece of card, and a pen, and I drew round my hand. And then I cut the hand out in the correct shape, and I ran back to the, my little shed studio, and... There it is. Great. Great. And then I can you know, turn the tape on and hold down the cord. So whatever, you know, whatever does it for you, however you can get it. We should take maybe two or three more, and this person is stabbing me, so. Um. Sorry, um, does anything exist, or are there any plans for other creative things that you've done, like pictures or poems or stories or toys that people can get to uh, find out about? Stuff you can get that I've done. I mean, there's... I do paint, but I don't usually do much with that. I either give it to people or throw it away or stand it in the corner or whatever. Um, I made some toy soldiers, and there's, there's a company in, in Yorkshire in England called Irregular Miniatures, and I can't think of their address right now, but they, you can buy them off of them. They're, they're something like 30 pence each. I don't know what that is, but 50 cents, and they're unpainted, and you have to paint them and stuff. But if, if you can find their number, I, I couldn't tell you what it is. I haven't, fresh air. Um, but, you know, you can buy those. But, uh, I mean, that's just a sort of a personal hobby thing. That's, I'm not hoping to be a toy soldier millionaire. Or <laughs> it's just I know the fellow that casts them, and he says if I make them, he can whatever. So, two more, two more. Uh, this, this lady in the check chair? Yeah. Have you heard the Louis Philippe cover of I Can't Own Her Yet? I, what do you think of it? I heard it about two days before I came away for this trip, oh. and I think it's really rather charming, I've got to say. Cool. It's nothing like ours. Okay, It's, it's more wonderful. sort of... Do you like it? I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it Oh, yet. it goes... <laughs> uh, <laughs> I own this reader. <laughs> Kind of, you know. Oh, yeah. like that. All right, one more, and then you know. So, hang on. Eeny, meeny, meeny. If I spin around or something, who, who, um, who, just somebody over there. Uh, have you asked one yet? No. No, all right. Go ahead. Okay. This is a non-musical question. Is this the kind of question that everybody at the back is dying to ask? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. If you could be reincarnated as a kitchen appliance, which would be and why? If I could be reincarnated as a kitchen appliance, which one would it be and why? This is really kind of, it's really, it's going to incriminate me. You know, if I say I'm a blender, does that mean I want carrots in my ass for all eternity? Or, you know, if it's a kettle, do I... I'm just, you know, I whistle forevermore. Uh, that's a tough one. Maybe a table. I'd like to be a good, solid, reliable table. You know, put your dinner on and, you know, play footsie with me. All right, I suppose we ought to um, get the old um, right hand going here. Do that sort of stuff.